So we're going to take a look at validation and verification. Both these things fall under what's known as defensive design, where we anticipate the misuse of our program by users. This could be a user not inputting data when they're supposed to, making errors in their answers, or trying to hack our program. Now let's take a look at the example. In this example, we are going to be writing a program that signs a user up to a website. Okay. First, we ask the user for multiple details like username, password, password confirmation, email, and age. And then we're going to perform our checks, so our validation and verification. And then we're going to print success if everything is valid. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable here and set it to true. Okay, the name of it is valid and it represents the state of our program. And by default, we are saying the state is true. But if any of these checks fail, then we can set the state to false. And we can use that valuable or that variable down here to print out the appropriate message. So if valid equal equal to true, then we're going to print out you have successfully signed up. Okay. If it's not true, then we're going to print you um, actually something has gone wrong. And I can't spell today at all wrong. Okay, cool. So you can see we already have a use for it. First, we're going to do the presence check. Now, remember when we run this program and uh, users ask these questions, even if they hit enter with no response, Python think, thinks it's an empty string or sets it to an empty string and thinks something's there. But we want to do a check to see if the user has actually inputted anything. So we can say if username is equal equal to empty string, okay, or password is equal equal to empty string or password confirmation equal to empty string or email equal equal to empty string. And finally, age. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom out so it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, so if username, password, password confirmation, email, age is empty, or well, empty string in this case, we are going to say valid is equal to false. Okay, so this will change the state of our program. And we should have the correct message displayed at the bottom. So let's go enter, 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 enter. Something has gone wrong. Okay, so that's good news. So that's our presence check. So let's do our length check. Now, let's say we want to take a username that only has five characters or less. Okay, we can do this by doing a length check and then setting the form to invalid. So we can say if len, which is a built in function in Python, and username. So the, the function will count the number of uh, characters in the string and return that result as an integer. So we can say if greater than five, okay, and then valid is false. So we only allowing people to sign up with a username that has five characters or less. So we can say, enter username, let's have a, a really long one. And something has gone wrong. And if we had, um, let's say greater than five, so, or less than five, sorry, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and you have successfully signed up. So that is our length check done. So let's do our type check. Now, the type check we can perform on something like age, okay? Because age we would want as an integer, and we know that when we do this input stuff, it comes back as a string every time. And if we wanted to use range, uh, age for our range check, we need it to be an integer, okay? So we can say if age, actually, in fact, we can do if not is instance age. And then int. Okay. So what have we done here? If not, okay, is instance. 
Now, is instance is a uh, built-in function in Python, and it checks this variable that we give it, age, is actually what we are saying it is here, the integer. So is age an instance of integer? And the result is a Boolean value, so true or false. So in this case, we want this to come back as false for it to go down here. So if not is instance is a way of saying if not true. Uh, we could also do it if is instance equal equal to false. Okay, but that's up to you how you prefer to write this. I'm going to keep it as this for now just to show you that there is another way of doing it. Now, normally what we've been doing here is saying it's false. Okay, and that's okay. But then we will continue on and do the range check. Okay, if the code is running, if uh, age is not an integer, it'll do false. But then the code will still run and then break because we'll be doing a check for a string against an integer. Right. Now, we are actually defending against ourselves here because as a programmer, we didn't convert this from an integer to a string. So what we would do differently here is say, we still can tell the user something went wrong, but we can just use Python's exit function and terminate the program completely. Okay, so I'm going to leave this as is for now. We're going to go to the range check. Okay, now remember the range check is actually for whatever reason, we're going to prevent teenagers from signing up. So we can say if age is actually greater than equal to 13 and age is less than equal to 18 then they are a teenager in fact 19 <laughs> then they are a teenager and we'll want to say valid equal to false because we can go back to normal now because we're actually checking the values of age right now let's see what happens when we run the form so enter username, password, password, enter email address, and now importantly, age. So if we did a number, let's say the user was 13 and he hits enter, something went wrong. Okay. Because remember, we didn't add the conversion, you know, the cast to int, and it's come in here. So to prove that, you can just say, we are here. If we run this, one to three, one to three, one to three, one to three, and age 13, we are here. Okay. So now we prevented the program from breaking, right? What do I mean by breaking? Let's use comments to comment out our check. And we'll run this again. One to three, one to three, one to three, one to three. And our age is times 13. And our program breaks. Our program's breaking because we didn't do the conversion yet, and we don't have anything in our code that's defending against ourselves as the programmer, okay? So I'm going to put that check back, I'm going to clear this, and now we are going to do our conversion. Okay, run this, enter username, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and our age is going to be 13. And something has gone wrong. And that's because the, the customer was a teenager. And we'll sign up again to so enter a username, do all of this. And now we're going to put an age outside the value or the range, and you have successfully signed up. Okay. So that's important for type and range. Type is defending really against ourselves here with the, the variable type check, and the range is whatever reason we're preventing teenagers from signing up. Okay. So that is the range check. Okay, so now we're going to do a format check. And a good example for a format check is email. Why email? Because emails have a specific format. They always have a name, at, maybe company name, and then .com. So it could be reval at studystreamplus.com. Okay, so we can do a format check. And we can make it very simple. We can just do a check to see if the at symbol has been supplied. Okay, so we can do something like if at, so if this character not 
in email. Okay, so if we cannot find that character, the at symbol in the email string, then valid is now false. Okay, now if we run our program again, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and your email address this time. So your email address needs to be something with an at symbol. Okay, and your age, we're going to put, um, we apparently allow one year old to sign up. Okay, so you have successfully signed up. So we're going to run this again with all our data, and we're going to say this time without the at symbol. Okay, and something has gone wrong. So it's determined that, okay, you did not have an at symbol, and therefore your email is invalid. Right. Finally, we're going to move on to verification. Now, verification, we have password and password confirmation. Okay. So verification helps prevent the user in this case from making a mistake because if we only asked for password once, if somebody types in their password and made a typo without knowing it and hit enter, then they would have signed up with an in, uh, you know, the, a password that they didn't actually intend to create and they'll be locked out of their account before their account even exists. So let's go down here. So we can say if password is not equal to password confirmation, then valid is false. That's a pretty simple one. We run this again. So now we have a username, a password. Let's keep it as one, two, three. Actually, you know what? To make this less confusing, let's do uh, Reval, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, Reval at study stream plus.com, your age, and apparently I'm one years old. You have successfully signed up. So all our data was valid. So our passwords matched. So if we ran this again and said, Reval, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> uh, then Reval at study stream plus.com, and my age is one, and something has gone wrong. So same data is just that it did this check and it was invalid. So that is it for um, validation and verification. A bit lengthy, but you do see this question come out in exam papers. Usually they'll give you this bit and you'll have to fill out the rest. And they might not check, uh, ask you to do every check, but they might be two or three checks done at once. So at least this way you know how to do a presence, a length, a type, a range, a format, and also how to do verification. And that's it for this video.